You're listening to Love is the Answer, a podcast that explores the power of love in real life with your hosts, Lynn Kidd and Laurel Elstrom. Welcome to Love is the Answer. I'm Laurel Elstrom with my co-host, Lynn Kidd. And today we're going to be talking about hypnotherapy as a spiritual tool with our guest, Susan Bernardini. And hi, it's Lynn, and Love is the Answer is brought to you in part by Take Heart Publications, publishers of A Course of Love and Choose Only Love. You can find more information about both of these books and A Course of Love uh, and links also to our Course of Love Zoom study groups by going to acourseoflove.org. You can also download the first 24 chapters of A Course of Love for free. Again, that is acourseoflove.org. Great. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, it's time to bring in our guest, Susan Bernardini. Susan's really active in A Course of Love. We're happy for that. She's also the owner of Transitions Hypnosis, LLC, and holds a ma master's degree in counseling. She's a certified master hypnotherapist and a past life regressionist. And she's also a longtime student of both A Course in Miracles and A Course of Love. Hey, welcome to Love is the Answer, Susan. Thank you. Thank you both. Very happy to be here talking about my very favorite subject. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So thanks again, Susan, for so much for joining us today. And we're going to start with um, asking you the first question that we ask all of our guests. And that is, what is love to you? That's the hardest question to answer. And I really wanted to punt it. <laughs> 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 and not say anything platitudes like love is everything but I think love is the energy mm. of everything it is the energy of movement being an expression it is the force behind all movement all things animated and inanimated we're not flesh and bone we're particles and waves and that wave is a vibration, and that vibration is love. And that's the best I can do. That's pretty darn good. Thank you. <laughs> we'll take that. Thanks for that. Yeah, thank and, you. So we're going to be talking about hypnosis today. And so let's start by clarifying what happens to a person during hypnosis, and why should somebody on a spiritual path be interested in hypnosis? First of all, hypnosis is a state that all of us go in and out of every day. Most notably, that period of time right before you wake up and become fully awake, you're in a highly suggestive state, which is basically what hypnosis is. It is a connection to the subconscious mind, bypassing the critical mind, which is your day-to-day -day awareness. The second time you go into hypnosis every day is that time right before you fall asleep. You're not really asleep. You're not really awake. And you're right in that very deep state of suggestiveness. And that can be useful to people because during those two periods of time are the times when you can speak to yourself and make suggestions to your subconscious mind that will be helpful to you things you might want to change or accomplish or answers you're looking for, you can speak to yourself during that time on a very deep level. So what part of your mind are you actually speaking to during hypnosis? Like, is that part of the identity, part of my conditioning? What am I addressing? No, it is actually part of the mind. There are different functions in the mind. Of course, there is a part of your mind that you do not control at all. It's the part that beats your heart and causes the action of breathing. And then all these different functions, the millions of functions that go on in your body without you having to think about it. But that's still your mind doing that. So is the second part of that question, I know it was kind of a loaded question, so you may have forgotten, but why would somebody on a spiritual path be interested in it that 
is such an individual question. Everybody who is on a spiritual path has questions. They might want to be able to get in touch with that deeper part of themselves, have that relationship with the center of the self that is connected to the collective consciousness, the one mind. Well, that's what I seek when I go into deep prayer, mm -hmm. is that communion with God. And that's the best way I have to describe it. And you say that that happens during mm -hmm. those two times of day? It's, you're communing with God? Is that what's happening yeah. there? Yeah. I guess my question in this is, would you say that it's a tapping into the universal mind? Absolutely. Something that is greater than we. Yes. It's not about necessarily a personal. Uh, no, but there is a level in between the conscious awake mind mm -hmm. and the universal subconscious mind. There's a personal subconscious area where all of your memories and feelings have been stored since birth in this lifetime that you may not have had the judgment to be able to see clearly or accept when you were little. So that's dealing with the conditioning. The stored memories and experiences are part of your conditioning. And so when you use hypnosis, you're undoing harmful conditioning? Yes. We're going in there and looking at it and reframing it, replacing it. Mm -hmm. And healing can be immediate, mm -hmm. absolutely immediate. And that's the reason I went from talk therapy to hypnosis, mm -hmm. is that people want to change. As a spiritual tool, is it important for me to change my conditioning? Up, basically, I'm updating my conditioning when I do that. So I'm replacing conditioning that was harmful with another suggestion, another belief, another idea. Yeah, or healing, forgiveness, or the ability to see it in a new perspective, or to let it go, which is basically what forgiveness is, overlooking. So in that case, you're recognizing, oh, this is from my conditioning, and I'm going to let that go, so that your identity what I'm getting toward is if my identity is my association with my past memories, even and subconscious experiences, and some of that might be getting in the way of my life, then hypnosis can be used as a spiritual tool in that I can expose the parts of my conditioning that are holding me back in my expression of my spirituality would that be accurate yes and some problems or issues in life are from this lifetime and mm -hmm. some are from previous lifetimes when problems and conditions that fail medical treatment and clinical hypnosis treatment that's when we go to the transpersonal or the psycho spiritual realm of the past life regression or the life between lives regression. I think you're coming into the next question. So I'd kind of like to, if it's okay, we can move into the next question, which sort of covers this, encompasses this. In your practice, you do offer the two, as you said just now, the two approaches to hypnotherapy. One is the clinical hypnotherapy, and then the other is transpersonal hypnotherapy. If you could share a little bit about each one of those as you were already doing. And then mm -hmm. the second part, is there a way to use the self-hypnosis for both of these techniques? Well, I may have said this already, but I just have to emphasize it because it is so important that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. When you go to a hypnotherapist like myself, I'm only your facilitator. You are doing all the work. I'm just guiding you. When you go away from my office. My job is to teach you to be your own best hypnotherapist. And you, once you know the way, once I've shown you the way, then you can get there yourself. Basically what happens in clinical hypnotherapy is you don't need a very deep 
state of hypnosis. There are three basic levels of hypnosis. There's the alpha level, which depends on your brainwave frequency that can actually be measured by an electroencephalograph. So waking frequency is beta, and that's between, I think, the 7 and 14 hertz range. Alpha is the very light state of hypnosis where all the clinical work happens. After that, you go into a, what they call a theta range, and that's the realm of the past life regression for this lifetime that you're going through. After that is the delta range. Is there a way to, you sort of touched on this earlier, but is there a way to use both of those techniques ourselves? Yes, absolutely. Can you describe for us what a self-hypnosis session might look like? Yes, what you would do is actually write out your own session and then record your voice. Oh. Mm. When I hear this and I think about hypnosis, a question comes for me like, so on a spiritual path, I want to be done with trying to improve my identity. I'm over it. That's not where I want to put my juice. So there must be a temptation to like keep trying to fix myself on a, an identity level. How is this different from that? That really is it, though. It really is getting your stuff out of the way mm -hmm. so that you can become the elevated self of form, live day to day in a sustained state of Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. Without your conditioning tripping you up. and Yes, without your identity. Your, yeah. the, without the personal self being in the forefront. Mm -hmm. The personal self is... The accomplished, you accept that you are the accomplished. Just to summarize my question, would it be fair to say like the clinical hypnotherapy is more, I guess what I'm hearing is it's both about dissolving the patterns and conditioning where, you know, I will take a, a line from A Course in Miracles where it says you were removing the blocks to the awareness of love, of Bingo. love's presence. Yes. So it sounds like to me, the clinical hypnotherapy is dealing more something immediate that's going on in our lives right now. Conditioning yes, your personal patterns, life. Patterns and conditionings that may be causing conflict within me, issues coming up where I'm not feeling at peace. And then transpersonal seems to encompass much more. I've had a past life regression and so has Laurel. And so I know about the, and I work with a transpersonal psychologist, Joanne Selinsky, who studied with Brian Weiss. We did do a, a past life regression and I found it helpful. It wasn't so much like immediate things that were going on. It was more like a deep, going into some kind of deep, deep, unconscious, subconscious that was blocking me. The main thing was like fear. There was a fear about a certain thing that was blocking me, but I couldn't identify it. I could not identify it as something as a something happening right now. Concrete in my life, something concrete, something that's going on right now. So it it went beyond to me the personal, mm -hmm. and it was something that was more universal. So you mentioned before about past life regressions and between life regressions and. I think that those would be really interesting to our listeners. So the first thing I want to ask you, you've regressed people more than one in that process. Are you convinced that we actually do live multiple lives? Absolutely. Without a doubt. <laughs> have you There's... ever worked with anybody that you couldn't access another life? Well, I did have one woman who, who wanted it too much. It's like, mm -hmm. if you come into the office and, oh, she wants to go into hypnosis and she wants it so much. I couldn't get her to relax enough mm -hmm. to get deep enough. So she sure. came back the next day and things were fine. Well, I think <laughs> one of the reservations that people have about uh, regressions like this is sometimes people use it to enhance their ego. You know, like, oh, I was Cleopatra and so were, you know, 5,000 other women in this city. Talk about... Like, why do I need to know my past lives? Didn't I learn my lessons and take them with me? What's the value for a spiritual traveler 
to access past lives. Sometimes you don't, though, solve your problems in a, a certain lifetime. And also, we reincarnate with the same soul group over and over again. So the main players in your life are likely people that you're in a soul group with on the other side and that you agree to incarnate and work out issues between you. A lot of past life regression issues are relationship issues. Who was this person to me in a past life? And, and what is our, I don't like to use the word karma, but what is our karma? You know, what is, what is it that we are trying to work out together for each other in this life? So that would be the main value of yes. a past life regression. Yeah, re relationship issues, fears and phobias, medical issues, birthmarks. It's unexplainable yeah. pains that cannot be accessed through medical treatment or relieved. And so do you find that when people become aware of that, then, then that stops? They don't yep. have those pains? Awareness okay. makes it boom. Okay, yep. great. So then the other thing that you work with that I'd like to explain, I really don't know much about this at all, is a between life regression. What's that about? Think of this, this is a metaphor, but think of our, the life in our bodies as we're the train and then we stop at a station between lives. We stop, we go back to the same train station after each life. We review, we go before a council of elders where we also do a little review. We have a reunion with the souls that we incarnate with because we don't send 100% of our soul into a lifetime. A part of your soul is always back on the other side. The larger part of you, if you will, that A, a Course of Love talks about, mm -hmm. that going outside the dot of your body, that circle. So there's a part of you on the other side. So there's a part of every other soul that you are in a soul group with on the other side. And is that where you go in a between life regression? You go to connect with the other Yes, yes, you go after you have your review, you have a, a resting period, you go before the Council of Elders, and this is thousands and thousands of people who don't know each other that live hundreds of miles apart that describe the exact same experience over and over. I can only take you back to your life on the other side before you came in here I into see. this life. I, I take you through the womb and then take you back to before you were born, mm -hmm. or I take you to your past life, to your death scene, and back to the other side. And the primary value of doing this is? To see why you chose this life, why you chose the challenges that you did, what it was you're trying to accomplish this time around mm -hmm. is the, the main value. And in both of these, past life regression and life between life, is you come away with the realization that there is no death, that you go on and on, and you're basically yourself. There's no fear of death anymore. Thanks. Yeah, okay, thank you. I think uh, we'll move on to the question of the week now. And it's, oh, gosh. of course, it's all connected. So our question of the week is, uh, here it is. How is love the answer? to releasing one's karma from a past life experience. First of all, I don't really believe in karma being about rights or wrong or righting wrongs or punishment or anything. I think karma is more about achieving wholeness. We want the range of experience in life to develop our souls to where we can be in complete bliss, in the complete bliss of unity love. That's the best way I know how to describe it. But our goal is to graduate from this birth, death, rebirth cycle. So we don't go to the other side anymore. We don't go to the in-between lives. We've graduated. We don't have to come back anymore. You know. Now, what happens after that? I have some theories, but they're only theories. I think we just help others 
you know, like all these collective consciousnesses that are channeled like Abraham and like a woman named Jane Roberts channeled a collective consciousness called Seth mm -hmm. who come through to help humanity. They're non-physical beings and they're non-physical because they graduated. When I read this question, what I get back is that it's really important to love and honor myself. The part of myself that decided to come in and play this game, the part of myself that created the computer program of this life, not because there's anything wrong with it, this idea of having to improve and get it right and may not make any mistakes and it, all of that, I think is really not productive. We are sovereign extensions of God. This particular experience is one that you chose because you wanted it. And that respect, that self-respect and self-trust that, yeah, th there's nothing, nothing is at risk here. I can't be harmed. So I'm playing at this because I wanted the experience of this and I trust the part of myself that chose to be here for this dance at mm. this time. Good. And That's beautiful. Yeah, I love what both of you said and I love that part too is what it, the overall um, essence of this for me is like to honor our journey, you know, to love ourselves no matter what, there's not anything wrong with any of it. Also, I think it's important for me at least that in this question, how is love the answer to release in one's karma from a past life experience? You know, not everyone has the same definition of karma. Mm -hmm. So for me, and I like what Susan, you know, started out when she explained what it was to her. For me, I feel like it's the karma is those old conditionings and patterns that we are carrying over from past, you know, from past life to past life. I was listening to Rupert Spira one time or Rupert Spira. Love him. He had a question about reincarnation and the way he explained it was, you know, the one mind, the one self, you know, the, the space outside of the dot and the circle is like a river. Okay. And then there's, there's all the different energies in the river. As we know, energy, never dies it just it's transformed so there's really no death in in the energy that makes up the whole universe the river is the one self he explained the fact that the individual experiences that we have when we incarnate into form is like a whirlpool within the river and you have the ripples of the different Little energies eddies. and then when we die that whirlpool disseminates the energy sort of scatters within the one self, the one river, and eventually certain tractor fields, so to speak, pull certain strands of that whirlpool back together. And those are the energies that are coming through to the next experience and to form. His whole answer to it was, yes, there, there are, you know, there is a such thing as reincarnation because these energies do come back together. They form a new whirlpool in the river. And that's why we remember. And so if I'm pulled back into a new whirlpool and a new incarnation, but I still have the strands from a previous energy field, I've attracted back into this field there's a remembrance of some things that happened. And so for me, that would be the value of to love all of that and to be able to transform it to where I am no longer stuck in a certain pattern or a block that I feel and that like doesn't attract to you. Yeah, there's, that's no longer whatever it's, you know, whatever that block or fear is causing that it's no longer like inhibiting my freedom or my expression of who I am. And that's what I got, you know, just to be brave from my past life regression. And I think as spiritual aspirants, the essential thing is to not use any of this information to increase my attachment to any identity. 
but to expose things I'm still holding on to or are still that are still limiting me, recognize, oh, this is a game I played before and I'm finished with that now. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. back to being the one. <laughs> yeah. So. Have you ever had any past life regression where you were male? Yes. That's, those are interesting to go, yeah. ah, it's still me. Ah, yeah. Amazing, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all the time that we have time for today. But Susan, before we go, I'd like to ask if there's anything you'd like to add to our discussion that you haven't had a chance to say. No, I think that we this has been really good, and I thank you both for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. No, oh, you're welcome. It was great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us, and thank you to our listeners also for joining us. And be sure to listen next time when our guest will be Lan Tai Bray. And she'll be talking about working with triggers and mirrors. And we're going to find out what all that's about. Yeah, and we'd love to feature your question as our question of the week. So if you have a question for us, please submit it to emailing us at love is the answer for you. That's number four at gmail.com. That's love is the answer for you. Number four at gmail.com. Thanks so much, Susan, for joining us today. Thank you, everyone, for connecting with us today. We'll see you next time on Love is the Answer. Bye. My pleasure. Bye.